and welcome back to another video! Hello and welcome to another video! Um, so, today I'm going to do something I've been thinking about doing for a while and that's doing a retrospective for Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts and later on I'll be doing the other two games um, because I've just recently 100% um, uh, Banjo Tooie so I thought Hey, I might as well do a retrospective on the game series now because um, my history of the game series is I well basically ban uh, I grew up on it with the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation One, and the Banjo Kazooie uh, was my childhood, along with Tony Hawk's. I can't remember which one it was. My might be one of the pro skater ones, but uh, Tony Hawk's game I used to play on my dad's on this on the PlayStation One. I actually still have a PlayStation One on the N64 buried around here somewhere. Um, and it, uh, I didn't play Banjo Two. I didn't get Banjo Tooie on the, the um, N64. But uh, what should I just like? Uh, hold on. Yeah, I forgot what I was finding. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I didn't get Banjo Two when it released on the Nintendo 64, but I uh, got I have a replay on my Xbox One, so um, I 100% uh, did it on that, and uh, that's what the footage you are seeing is also from the replay of um, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Um, and it, uh, yeah, so, um, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, I did play when it released on the 360, because my dad had the 360, and later, oh, and later on I got a 360, which is, that's down there, um, but I don't know where my copy of Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts on the 360 has gone, it's somewhere, I just don't know where, um, so, um, I played on there, and uh, this was before I was um, active on like YouTube and all that. Um, I, oh, I, this would have been like before 2010 ish. I would, I want to say so. I would have been like on my D. Oh, I would have been on my old D DS Lite, probably playing Pokemon Platinum because I, ne I never got around to playing Generation Five or well, Black and White. I, I did Black and White too in my own free time and. Black and white too, it's definitely better than black and white. Anyway, um, so yeah, um, I did that. I, uh, I didn't one hundred percent it, but I did beat it, and it was actually the first Banjo Kazooie game I actually beat because while I did play the original a lot, I never beat it because of a stupid reason. Like, I was a stupid kid. Like, um, I thought, oh, when you leave it, it counts all the notes that you collected and they respawn, so I just thought oh, I could just, like, go in and out and collect them. I kept on doing that, and I play, I, honestly, I play Mumbo's Mod Mod Mountain so much, today I know it like the back of my hand. Like, seriously, um, I, uh, when I went to, to go 100% um, Badger Kazooie on where we play, I did Mumbo as a mountain in, I think it was like under an hour or something like that. Uh, I'll, I'll have to talk about more about that during my retrospective of uh, Banjo-Kazooie and not this game. But let's let's talk about this game. Yes, I love this game, but I will admit right here, right now, it is not a good Banjo-Kazooie game, but it is a good game. Like, just ignore the fact that it's Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, it's a fun car race, you know, car building and racing uh, with uh, some some repetitive challenges, but some unique and creative and challenging uh, challenges, and uh, the, some homages and the, the references to previous games. And this is one of my favorite things to do. So, uh, some you can't, you know, pick your own vehicle, and they're called Logs Choices. Well, what you can do with Logs Choices is jump out of your vehicle, press B. And you can edit your vehicle. Oh, uh, I should have grabbed that back there, but it doesn't matter. So yeah, you can edit it like that, and um, 
And here you can find extra pieces. So I'm just gonna add them. Um, that one there. And it makes it and it makes most of the logs choices super easy out. And uh, yeah. It's a uh, that is one of my favorite things to do because in, my, in the games I play, one of my favorite things to do, I cannot get up this mountain. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to just find. This is a little bit top heavy. Is to find any way that I can to um, cheese the game. Uh, and if you don't know what I mean by cheese the game, basically exploit a mechanic or an oversight in the game to make something easy. Now, for my playthrough, I didn't to like um, use any game breaking, uh, well, not literally game breaking, but metaphorically game breaking glitches, such as, such as um, getting item boxes early. I didn't do that because I just like, uh, well, not this one. I do believe I did show a video that um, where one time I was replaying this. And I did that, uh, but that was on another save file. This is a completely different user because um, now I use this as the second one, and I couldn't like get that to work with 360 games anymore, so I had to play the new one. Yeah, I'm not gonna get into that. Um, but yeah, um, I did this. Uh, you know, legitimately, I didn't use a hover glitch to get anywhere I shouldn't be, and. Uh, the, I did everything uh, properly, and uh, did, yeah, it's it has a very good sense of progression. One of my favorite things to do is like when I got a laser, when I got something like the laser, my favorite thing to do would be just to go around and collect every item box I can find. Um, and I've got all the notes. Um, if I go to view view statistics, I think yeah. So I've got all the all of the jiggies, all of the gingos, all of the notes, all of the TT trophies. I've spent over a day in this game, I, and I do come back to it every, um, I have come back to it a couple of times, because one of, one of the more fun things I like to do in this game is to just build a vehicle, like the vehicle building, while I do have complaints, like it limits you to how many pieces you can have, I was just like, well why, why would you limit me to how many pieces, like, why would you give me all of these body parts? And then just go, you can only use uh, X amount of them. Like, seriously. Uh, and I've, I do, yeah, I've got all the parts and... Oh, I went bought all the blueprints, let me do that quickly. Um, so, yeah. Um, there we go. And I've even... Um, Done all of the um, seek the DLC for this game, which believe me, if you're going for 100% of this game, game including the DLC, the, there are two missions in the DLC that uh, um, getting the TT trophy was especially hard. Um, and let's just uh, let, let's uh, let's have a look at some of these stop and swap blueprint. Let's have a bit of one of these. Um, oh, it's a turret. Yeah. Oh, that, that is really clever. Actually. Oh. Bye. Okay. What did he say? Yeah. Oh, is that so you can aim it up? Yeah. Oh, that's actually quite cool. Anyway, um, uh, one of my favourite things is to just like go in here and build some vehicles. Like early one today, I built a type defender. Um, I think this was like a, a test thing I was doing for like, um, I was thinking about building like a miniature helicarrier. So I built this to see how viable it was. And with, with like half of it built is not too viable. So I scrapped that idea. But yeah, like look at this. Maybe if I used large propellers or something. Um, oh, and I also built Darth Vader's tie advanced. Um, I'll go. Oh! Yeah, I think 
can. And... Yeah, I got tired uh, after this tired man. The barrel roll, oh uh, no. Nope. The barrel roll really slowly. I think maybe if I stop it. Oh no, I'm just gonna fall out of the sky for something to say. Anyway, um. If it, this game, I was talking about this game. So yeah, if you just ignore that this is a Banjo Kazooie game and don't judge it by Banjo Kazooie games. It is a lot of fun to like build vehicles and uh, uh, complete the missions. And like I've said, I've 100 percent of this game. Uh, and I played the original when I was little, so nobody can just like, oh well you don't know how good the original games are where like, I've not only played them at this point, but I've also I played them as a little child and I've now gone back and 100 percented the both of the original games. So yeah, you can't really say that I'm not a fan. I do, I absolutely love Banjo Kazooie Banjo 2. I've 100 percent in ukulele as well, which I wanted to, I did before those two. And it, um, I found recently found out about this like snake game as in the similar vein, which I'll probably uh, once I've uh, completed all of games on my Switch, I'll probably be getting that and really getting that as well. Because I love the collect funds on there so much. But ignoring nostalgia, this game is legitimately fun. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't have 100%ed it, then come back to make a tie defender, a um, like uh, heli carrier, carrier beta, and oh, I remember this. Um, this this one was cool. I forgot. I saw this earlier. And I don't remember what this was called, but yeah. Um, I built this thing where yes, right now it's a car. But if I press B, and then that, it's like a, it's a um. It is a motorcycle that can fly. It has a spring. You can also sort of fly as well when it's in the when in car form. And it's just like these things, it's like you get an idea of something cool you can build. And you can just go do it. Like it, I swear if if we released this and it wasn't to uh, end um, with the Banjo Kazooie characters, it was like um, tip, uh, like um, John Tron said, tip top nuts and bolts or um, something like that. Then I think it would have been a lot better received and I think people would be like, yeah, that, this is a really good game, go pick it up. And um, I think it was mainly just fans being angry because, and, I, and it's not like I don't get why people were angry, is it? because um, Banjo 3E was teased for so long. And for them to just turn around and give us something that's nothing like Banjo 2, uh, 3, or 2E, or the first one, is just a slap in the face. But that's not the game's fault. Um, it's not the game's fault to that to, um, Microsoft dicked rare over. And I've made an entire video on why I think... Uh, uh, how I think uh, Microsoft killed Rare. Um, I made a video about that on my channel. Um, but, like I said, that's not this game's fault. Um, and you should judge this game independently of um, what Microsoft did to Rare. Uh, like I said, again, if this was. Um, anything for Banjo Kazooie pretty much, like, a, uh, or like anything that's not a already established series or they emphasise that it was a spin-off and that Banjo 3 was coming at some point in the future and this was not replacing it, then I think this would have been a m would have been much better received. And, oh, and something else I want to complain about, um, if you was just playing the Banjo Kazooie game and so, like, um, I pretty much only knew the characters from the Banjo Kazooie games, that, to which there's not too many, like Humble Wombas from Banjo Tooie, and um, and uh, there's Bottles from uh, Banjo, and the uh, Mumbo Jumbo. But they added like, and there's Boggy, but they added this pig guy who 
I really don't care. Like, I really don't care about these new characters, like the pig police officer. I don't care about um, that frog guy. Uh, I can't even remember his name. Um, well, yeah, I don't really care about them. And they, they could have added any characters from Banjo Tooie. Little Pundos make some return. And uh, Mr. Fit, I really. Uh, of all the Banjo Tooie characters to bring back. Mr. Fit, only seen in the in the sec in the last level before the like mini level before the boss fight. Why bring him back? This level was that level wasn't even needed to beat the game. That was just optional, just like if you were struggling to go and do some diggies in there, and then you might uh, then you have a better chance of get being able to fight the final boss. But why, of all Banjo Tooie characters? Mr. Fit! Seriously, he is the most forgettable character! Like, um, what next? Mr. Chomp or Munch or whatever his name was, he, um, Crocodile or Al Alligator, I don't know which one, guy from Banjo Kazooie, uh, where we live, where you had to eat all those things. Or, um, or, or better yet, um, the Stonies! They, they, the Stonies! were more prevalent to had more screen time than Mr. Fit because they had three six uh, it was three rounds in um, the first level where you uh, fight them which was compulsory then there was a second level that they appeared in which was compulsory where there's another three rounds so not only did um, were they in compulsory levels but Mr. Fit uh, they appeared more times than Mr. Fit so why Mr. Fit over a Stony? I mean, I guess you can't really understand a Stony unless you're a Stony. But does this game really care about the lore of Banjo Kazooie? Let's be honest. Yeah, really. Are you like? I'm just saying, Mr. Fit isn't a bad character. He's just a forgettable one. That had no personality and only ha appeared in a optional level. So why he was included over any of the like? There was even Grunty sister. Oh, what the heck was going on with those two writers? Anyway, there was even Grunty sisters that you could that they could have brought back instead of them. The pit that they could have uh, brought back instead of introducing the pig, the frog, or Mr. Fit. Uh, because she has two sisters, so any one of those three could be gone. Like, um, even him up here, he he's completely useless because you just bribe him to stop the police from coming after you, but that honestly has no impact. And the police are so incompetent that it's just a waste of notes. Like, seriously, I'm just going to sit here and let... Look, he missed. He fucking... Like, come on. So easy. And then, even easier when you get the laser, then you can just go zap dead. Now, the only time they've ever annoyed me is when I try to bank a large amount of jiggies, and they keep on knocking over my stationary uh, um, trolley that I'm not even in it, and knocking over all the jiggies. Usually on accident because they go after you and not the trolley, so they, they've been missing me and hitting the trolley instead. That's the only time I found them annoying. Uh, all the other times I've just made it, uh, just run away, either run away from them or kill them. They are completely useless. Um, so I would, I will say that they should have added more Banjo Kazooie, uh, Banjo Tooie characters, like even um, King Jingling. He is uh, uh, delicate, relocated to a supporting role in this game, running his Jinjo Bingo over here. Um, which is, uh, which is like, it's a cool mechanic, but why can't, doesn't he have any challenges? Why introduce, uh, introduce the two unnecessary characters who both also have a role to play in Showdown Town along with all the other characters, and just leave him here? It would have been as simple as just putting this model anywhere and having him talk, they even have it so you can interact with him. Why was he not? A yeah. Why was he not a character that you could, in you know, get challenges from? Like seriously, 
<laughs> and there was even um, Banjo Land, uh, where you could only encounter characters from previous games. Um, why won't, why couldn't he have appeared in there? Also, talking about um, Banjo Land, there's, there's uh, recently been a cool glitch discovered that um, in one mission in Banjo Land you can find uh, two of Boggy's children, but not all three for some reason. Um, you know, the, uh, the fact that they just have him as a supporting role where he was a... Well, he wasn't the most memorable character from Banjo 2, he was a main character and one of the um, main factors behind Banjo and Kazooie wanting to be stronger than Tilda because, um, you know, they killed her, him. So why... Why? Why couldn't he have been a main character in this? He's like King of the Jingos. Heck, he could have been the one issuing the Jinjo challenges because he just because uh, um the G all you see for Jinjo challenges are just uh, random Jinjo. So it could have been just been like um, King Jingling, just like hey, I have two Jinjo challenges for you. Do you want to do Jinjo healing or Jinjo combat or Jinjo race or speed or whatever? And, uh, the, you know, then he would have given you a token rather than just like a normal DJ giving you a token. Anything but just a basic role, just standing there, just with some lines. Um, and also there's more main characters from the other games, like there's the Yuggers who could have made a return. He, they could have made uh, so many like one-off appearances, like the Ugger tribe. Um, uh, off the top of my head, like, um, the Minjos are in it, actually, but they're not really seen too much. Um, like, you could have had appearances from, uh, again, Bobby's wife and children, one of, one of, who were actually main characters in Banjo-Tooie, and were, and the Dedicates were in Banjo-Kazooie. Um, yeah, but enough ranting about sort of wasted opportunities with the vast amount of characters that are in this game. Something else I have a problem with this game, talking about character, is that it's not, it doesn't, like I said, it's a good game, but it's not a good Banjo-Kazooie game. It doesn't feel or like a Banjo-Kazooie game, there's none of that. Well, it doesn't take any of the British culture, like, in my ukulele video, I'm just like, um, it's just like uh, brimming with British comedy and uh, um, it just reeks of rare, rare and Britishness. Britishness. Um, but this, and it does so do Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie, but this game has none of that. Like, Kazooie, oh my, like, she has the odd crib, but she's nowhere near as funny as she used to be. Like, Seriously, I do, I do like the idea of like um, having these little guys here to tell you what things are all about. I don't know why they bothered building the grave because they resurrected him at the end of Banjo Kooie and he didn't have a grave then, so whatever. Um, well, um, Uh, the original moves, you have none of that, like, so that makes Lit Kazooie pretty much useless apart from spinning, spinning around a stick, which Banjo could do. And Banjo's been done even worse because all he can do is one jump, and yeah, he doesn't even have a double jump anymore because in Banjo um, 2e, when Kazooie was out of his backpack, he could jump, spin the pack backpack around, and then jump again afterwards, but you can't even do that with this. He can't attack, he can't do... Banjo is basically just useless. Just like Kazooie, and it's just missing so much of the heart. Like, again, in certain moments there are little flickers of uh, what of the original two games in the, in the dialogue. But it's never as... It's never... The dialogue is never on par with the first two games. And the, the, most of the time I just found myself just skipping through because a lot of it was very boring. And it, uh, yeah. Um, 
I would never say that um, this felt like a Banjo Kazooie game, like whatsoever. Um, Although there's an item box on the up there, I don't know why. Um, is there a helicopter in here somewhere? Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's also got weird things like here. There's a stop and uh, in Badger Two. There's a stop and swap two items. Which, oh my God! Just wait until uh, I go around to stop and swap two. Um. But yeah. Yeah, I'm not too happy with the fact that there's a stop and swap too. Um, but uh, also, um, if I said to you that um, this was on the Mary Play was coming to Nintendo Switch, you know. You probably would uh, give this, you should, if this game ever comes to the Nintendo Switch, is what I'm trying to say, you should give it a look. Like, it's definitely worth taking a look at it. Also, this it look is a lot smaller than this than Banjo Kazooie 1. I didn't see it like that. Seriously. We're supposed to be fighting on this. Anyway, um. Well. Just because I'm saying all these bad things, like saying it's more like Banjo the first two games, and it's not any of the personality or wit or anything. Again, it doesn't mean it's a bad game. I have fully enjoyed 90% of this game. Um, also, another stop and swap two items in the end. Yeah, but like I said, one of the most fun things is just like to come up with creative, wacky, and weird, uh, um, you know, card designs, and just, you know, uh, and just like test them out. Like, just like, could I make um, X in Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts? And uh, it is a lot of fun. Also, I wonder why this is like so. Something ca I do believe that. John Tron for took off is like when he mentioned that when he was talking about this game is the fact that the worlds are open and barren and that might be, co be because they were rich this uh, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Balls was originally was supposed to be Banjo 3 with an open world and a collect fun and all that but because they removed the collect a fun aspect um, they the worlds are now open and barren uh, because of it um, and I, I, that makes sense because it's like okay, you could go in there to get something if you and like in there. Like if you were uh, played Banjo Kazooie, two and Kazooie, could have like rewarded you for when we where everything is. Um, in here and just like you could have like gone up here to do like try and find something. I don't know what they would have done, but this area is big and expand. Like they've expanded so much on. Spiral Mountain and it's just like, uh, why would they bother when most of this is, like seriously, you never go out this far, um, you know, during normal gameplay. So why do they bother, like, making all of this? So, yeah. Something else I do quite like is um, the second to last challenge is uh, log is a um, log challenge. It's not log's choice, so it's six challenges mixed in with uh, quizzes, and it is not the hardest, but um, it does challenge your knowledge, and it is 
Um, and it is a good idea, cool idea. And we've got Banjo's house in here. And um, the idea of having to beat one team multiple times is also a cool one. Um, but yeah. Would I suggest picking this game up on the 360 or Xbox One through Rear Replay? Yes! Would I would I but I would suggest waiting until Microsoft either flat out denies that it's ever gonna come to Switch or confirms that it's gonna come to Switch and if it's com and if it's confirmed, don't get it on 360 or whatever. Um just get it when it comes out on the Switch because the pot because when re Rare Replay comes out on Switch it's probably gonna be something like um some exclusives to make it better. And um, I'm just trying to do a glitch. I just not want to go up. Also, something that's cool, I uh, didn't know, is that uh, before watching Chuck Conroy, because I usually used him to help me like to collect any like jiggies or notes or anything I was missing is that um using it because there's an all triggers you can like, slow, slow, lower it slowly which is cool um here we are oh come on oh, did they touch it out anyway um I think I've run out of things to say. It's like, it's a good game, but I do understand why people hate it so much. I do think it's definitely worth like picking up if you see if you definitely see it for a good price. Like if you you see it for like a couple quid, like at a second-hand store, or whatever. Definitely pick it up, but. Um, like I said, um, wait into, wait to see if we're replay to Switch. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit that like button, comment down below what you thought of this video, and uh, if you want to see more of my stupid face, don't forget to hit that to subscribe and uh, the ring a ding uh, that uh, notification bell. Otherwise YouTube won't uh, notify you of when I'm uploading videos for some unknown reason. And I'll see you guys in the next video.